Next speaker, uh, Marina Mariano. Okay. Um, hi. It is known that sands give us energy, and we are able to come to come to convert this energy to electricity. But up to which amount? Up to which amount of energy do we have? Well, if we see some figures. <laughs> Sorry. Ah. <laughs> Um, well, if, you look at, if we look at the volume of the annual irradiation to the Earth, this volume, this yellow cube, it's, we see that it's huge compared to the teeny cube that is the uh, human annual consumption of energy. So yes, sun is useful for uh, having energy, then what we have to do is to create the solar cells. In order that the organic solar cells are able to compete with the silicon ones, we must reduce the cost of these organics. How? Well, it has to be ambient processed, it has to be uh, uniform, it has to deposit a uniform layer, it has to be a cost effective, and also it's substrate independent. Some of the current uh, deposition techniques are spin coating, sorry, the spin coating, but it's not uh, substrate dependent. It has to be a round and flat. The spray coating is a more technological approach, but it doesn't have a uniform deposition. And the one it's uh, good for our deposition is roll to roll, but we are not independent of the substrate. It has to be a planar substrate. So today I will talk about a little bit of the organic solar cells, the tip coating technique, and the, the fabricated solar cells I did with the tip coating. Well, uh, the most important thing is in organic solar cells, upon uh, a photon absorption, it's an exciton, which is not free charges, it's a bound state of an electron and hole. And we have to split this exciton. This is done in the interface, and once we split these two charges, we can collect this. How? Well, there are two architectures. These are the bilayer, bilayer cells, and also the blend cells. In the blend cells, it's a mixture, and it has a higher interface area, but we don't have a good connectivity. We cannot extract so effectively the electrons in the holes. But on the bilayer cells, the conductivity is preserved, but the interface area is very low. Then, uh, to see if a solar cell is good, we have to observe the uh, behavior, the intensity versus current voltages. Uh, the important points are this, the, the short circuit current and uh, open circuit voltage, and the area below this curve. The higher is the area, the more power we can extract from the sun. Well, this is a deep coating. This coating is just uh, submerging our substrate and withdrawing it at a constant uh, velocity, and it forms a layer there. We can control the thickness of this layer by changing the concentration of our solution. Then, if we do our cells, we can have these uh, um, IV curves. This is for the B-layer cells, and these are the blend cells. The green curves are deep coating, and they are very, very, very similar to the spin coating ones. And if we look at the efficiency, well, it's good. I mean, deep coating is a suitable uh, technique. Moreover, if we reuse that solution, we can see that the, the behavior is not affected. Well, there is just an 8% of discrepancy of the fill factor, the efficiency. So we can reuse this solution, and the waste of material is also reduced. So, to conclude that we demonstrated that deep coating is a suitable technique as a spin coating, and we can reuse those solutions so we can open a door to a new procedure for a cost-effective at larger scale production. So now that we have the fabrication technique, we can extract the energy from the sun. So thank you. <laughs>